Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider various inconclusive cases for the higher derivative test. Just quick recall of the higher derivative test. You have a function, you have a point in the domain, the first derivative is 0, and there's some positive number greater than 1 such that that derivative is non-zero and all previous derivatives are 0. And the high derivative test basically helps you figure out under these conditions whether you have a local max or local min or neither. And actually if you if you satisfy all this then you will be able to figure out which of these cases happens. So the problem with applying the high derivative test is usually that you fail somewhere in this process. Okay, your some one of these conditions fails. So what type of problem could be run into? Well, since we are starting with a critical point, the first type of problem is that the critical point is the wrong type of critical point. Okay, so what does that mean? The derivative hmm, does mm -hmm. not exist, right? Mm -hmm. Because we know if the derivative exists for a critical point, it has to be zero. So that's this situation. But there could be the other type of critical point where the derivative doesn't exist. Okay. What's the next type of problem you could have? Can be uh, the number become non-zero. Well, that's 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 actually the third one on my list. Is there some other problem you could have? Well, another problem you could have is such so a sort of similar to this, something with not existing. Hmm. Ah, uh, it it doesn't exist. Well, is before it becomes non-zero. Yeah, so the higher derivatives cease to exist before becoming non-zero. Okay, so for instance, maybe the first three derivatives are zero. And then the fourth derivative doesn't exist. Okay? What's the third problem you could have? Oh, it's always zero. Okay? Is there any other type of problem you could have? Well, no. If the first derivative exists, the higher derivatives continue existing, so that you never they never stop existing, and they're not all zero. You will have this situation sometime, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a comprehensive list of the problems. Okay. So let's now figure out some situations where none of these problems are good. So, conclusive cases. Okay, so, first on my list is non-constant polynomials rational functions Etc. Well, the etc. actually includes things whose derivatives are rational functions. And there's some issues with those, so I'll, I'll leave those aside. Okay, so non constant polynomials and non constant rational functions. Okay, I'm claiming the higher derivative test will already be conclusive for these. Why? Quickly. Mm -hmm. Why is the higher derivative test always conclusive for non constant polynomials and rational functions? Because they will be uh, become non zero. Well, you figure stage. out why none of these problems occur. So why did the first problem not occur? Because it will be non-constant before it becomes constant. Becomes well, zero. the first problem. Does the derivative exist? Oh, it always exists. Exists. So that's mm -hmm. not a problem. Okay. Uh, the second problem. High derivatives cease to exist before becoming non-zero. Well, actually, all the high derivatives do exist for polynomials. Mm -hmm. For rational functions, also, all the high derivatives do exist wherever the function is defined. 
because if you remember the quotient rule for differentiation, right? The mm -hmm. the derivatives which come up there, the denominators are just powers of the denominator in the original rational function. So wherever the original rational function, the denominator doesn't become zero, the others also the denominator doesn't become zero. Mm -hmm. So so the derivatives always exist. Okay. So these two problems don't occur. What about the third problem? No, like I said, for polynomial, they will be a non-zero constant before they actually become zero. Zero as function. So, so if the polynomial has degree five, you know for sure that the fifth derivative is a constant function, mm -hmm. non-zero constant function, and that's why I assume non-constant polynomials. If it's a non-constant polynomial, some degree say five, then the fifth derivative is a non-zero constant function, which means that at the point c, it's non-zero. So, if you have a polynomial of degree five. Then what can you say about the k? It's at most five, right? Yeah. But in particular, there's some point at which the derivative becomes non zero. So that's good. For uh, rational functions, it's a little trickier to see. So I'll, I'll skip that. Because the way you differentiate a rational function is uh, a little different, but, but that's sort of the idea for polynomials. Okay. So the next one I'm going to talk about is a little more interesting. It's non-constant locally analytic functions. So what do I mean by that? Hmm? The power series at that point exists. Okay, so the function has have it here. F has a power series about C, about the point C, okay? Power series in X, it looks something like this. Over here? Yeah. And this here. Okay, and the X minus C is because it's about C. You may have seen power series about zero where you just had X and X where X cubed, but now we have X minus C. Okay. Now, A zero, is just f of c because when you plug in x equals c you should just get f of c so the constant term is just f of c a1 is just f prime of c which we are assuming is zero in our setup okay because we are doing everything at a critical point and what about a2 well you can do some calculation and find that f double prime at c is just 2a2 the reason is you first calculate f double prime x by differentiating twice and then you plug in x equals c and higher order term become zero and so you just get f double prime x is 2a2 and in general what you'll get is you'll get over here yeah. the kth derivative of f at c is k factorial times a k where a k is the coefficient of x minus c to the k so if you had this problem all the higher derivatives become zero then that would mean all of these are zero for k equal to one, two, three, so on, which means all of these are zero. Since k factor is non-zero, that would tell you that all the hmm? uh, a terms are zero. All the a k's are zero except a naught. So what would f x become? It would just become a naught plus zero plus zero and so on. So it just becomes a naught. So it just becomes f c. So f x just becomes f c around around c. And we are assuming it's non-constant. Well, actually, what I mean is not locally constant. So it's not constant around C, which me, which which is not allowed because what we said is that all of Z becomes zero, so it does become constant, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be a contradiction. So the upshot is, if we assume all the higher derivatives are zero, that would force it to be constant around the point which we are omitting, not allowing. We should actually say. Mean here, not locally constant about C is what I really mean. Okay. So the upshot is that none of these problems can occur, and so you can use the high derivative test. Now, what are some functions which are covered here but not covered in the polynomial rational function type situation? Hmm? 
Uh, well, any function which has a global power series, it would certainly work. So things like sine, sine, cosine, mm -hmm. exponential functions, so, and things involve adding and subtracting these mm -hmm. will fit fit in this framework, but they don't fit in the earlier framework. So this actually tells you that the higher derivative test is pretty useful at many places. I want to say one more quick thing. If you run into one or more of these problems with the higher derivative test, what can you say about the first derivative test? Can you use the first derivative test? Well, actually, for each of these problems, they don't form roadblocks to the first derivative test. Okay? So you can imagine situations for each of these problems where the first derivative test would still work. Mm -hmm. okay? Because the first derivative test just requires us to have f prime on the left and right. It doesn't require us to have f prime at the point. It doesn't require anything about high derivatives at the point. So the First derivative test actually can still be useful in some situations where high derivative tests are not applicable. Okay.